Welcome to Vulcan Deckmasters week one. This is day one. We're onwards to our third match of the day. We have a total of five. We just saw uh, Show versus Surrender. Surrender taking it with a Rogue uh, versus Show, which was actually an impressive finish with that sprint. Mm -hmm. Strivecore versus Thoida. A lot of people uh, do not know Thoida, but you will learn to know him. I think he's. Uh, I feel like he should get a lot more attention than he does. Maybe I'm. Uh, maybe I'm not recognizing the attention that he's getting, but I feel like it's a player who's largely underrated and unknown. And Strivecore, a complete powerhouse. You you've known Strivecore for a while now. Just very very solid player all around. Absolutely, and I personally played against actually both of these players. They're both absolute powerhouses uh, when it comes to Hearthstone. Obviously, Strivecore is known quite a bit more by the uh, Hearthstone community. He's on Team Cloud9. He plays second in the Via Game House Cup number four, uh, third slash fourth in the DreamHack Hearthstone Championship, first in Pinnacle 2, first in the King and Win Charity Christmas Edition. Right. Um, and yeah, he, he's, he's just, just a, a sick player. I think I think overall Strife Crow is one of the the most consistent players we've seen. And you know, as far as personality goes, it doesn't get nicer than that. So a very, very... It's a gem, basically. Strive Pro is a gem to the Hearthstone community. Like, the most friendly player. And in fact, uh, the picture we're going to see of him is uh, going to reflect that quite nicely if we if we get to see it. Now, and, and let's I talk about the classes. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, I think Strife Crow has been one of the only players who has been top five on the Ghost of Gamers Hearthstone rankings for probably the majority of its existence. Um, kind of going back to his, his consistency as a player, he, he's just well regarded through almost every website right now, ranking people as one of the top players. Um, Interesting. Just like how long has he been on top five? I haven't actually kept track of that because if that's true, then that is an achievement in and of itself. I'd have to say, I don't think I've ever actually seen him drop out of top five. Wow, that's actually a crazy thing. Because like, his, his tournament wins, like, I kind of uh, look at Kalento and Strife Crow as the two big names as far as consistency mm -hmm. goes very frequently. I look at both of them when I think of that. Um, so it's kind of nice to know. Top five Ghost of Gamers forever for Strife Crow. Classes. Both players are bringing Paladin and Hunter. I have to say, I sort of expected the Hunter. The Paladin, I can't say I did. Um, Strife Crow brought Warlock, where Thoida brought Druid as a third class. The Hunter from Thoida is going to be banned, and the Warlock from Strife Crow is going to be banned. So that leaves Strife Crow with Paladin Hunter versus Thoida's Druid Paladin lineup. Now, I'd actually have to give, just based on lineups, the advantage of Strife Crow. Um, in terms of Paladin, the Hunter has, I would say, minor advantage over the Paladin, and the Paladin is obviously 50-50. But Toyota's uh, weak point right now is Druid. It is generally considered a weak matchup for Druid when they're up against either a Paladin or a Hunter. So right. I'd be hard-pressed to expect for Toyota to actually be able to take a game with that Druid deck, unless he gets some crazy wild-growth innervate starts. Yeah, I mean, it's always the weakness of Druid. Like, I was talking about that earlier with you. Speaking of how strong it was considered for a while, but the metagame shifted so much, and every mm -hmm. class has gained so many archetypes, and the it's very unstable. Like, you don't know what you're going to queue up into very often in a ladder system. In a conquest format, the same is true. If you have uh, two weak matchups, it's going to be pretty much over, and it's very easy to punish them. I mean, with the strength of Zoo at the moment, the strength of mid-range Hunter or hybrid Hunter, both of which are doing very well versus Druid, um, it's very difficult for, for Druid to really make a spot for it. And funny enough... Uh, we saw a show play it against Surrender. He did win a game with a double Savage War, but it's not the most consistent way to win. Mm -hmm. Without that second Savage War, the game was probably going to go to Surrender. I'd have to agree. Now, I have to ask you, what do you think about these players bringing Paladin? What do you think they had in mind when they uh, decided on these lineups? Well, there's been a resurgence since uh, RDU played um, Agro Pally... On stream, I mean, I know I know Just Stayin was playing it on ladder quite a bit, um, Agro Paladin, and RDU then picked it up and played it a bit on stream. Agro Paladin, and we're talking about the you know blessing of might, uh, just divine shield over the place, punch face with Arden Squires as fast as possible, get a good divine favor and keep punching. Um, but I don't pin Strife Crow on that kind of play. However, I wouldn't be surprised if Thorida decided to bring something like that. Whoa, is that a heal bot in a druid deck? Um, <laughs> more, more, wait, wait, is that a Druid of the Flame in a Druid deck? <laughs> that's more, that's more the, my reaction to this. Aren't you surprised by the Druid of the Flame at all? No, nothing, just straight up <sighs> poker face dart. I mean, that one's like, 
But, the, but what? Well, why the Heelbot? I, I no, you can't be like I've seen Heelbots in Mill, right? Oh, oh that luckily Stripe mark. Crow has the perfect answer to this. The Hunter's Mark is huge here. Okay, zombie chow. Thoida, what have you brought to us? And I have Wait. to say one thing for Thoida. He is an unorthodox player. He brings explosive shot and faint death and mid-range hunter. He brings all sorts of really unusual choices for uh, decks even. Not even just cards, mm -hmm. just decks entirely. Oh, he, man. But he, he is an unbelievable deck builder. He understands the meta. He knows what to bring. He's actually a player who made it through the entire European qualifier to get into this tournament to match up against players like Strife Crow. And to be able to pull off reads like this in terms of understanding the meta to bring a Zombie Chow, Druid of the Flame, anti Keelbot Druid is unbelievable. Which is why he was afraid of Hunter, you know? That probably makes a lot of sense now. He's not really afraid of Hunter because he thinks his deck is well tailored to beat it. Exactly. And so taking a... What was Toyota's last deck that got banned? It was actually his own Hunter. So having a mm -hmm. set of Hunter, Druid, Paladin with this defensive of kind of maneuvers may just be an anti-Hunter lineup. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, Hunter is one of the most popular cards, uh, cards classes alongside... Um, Warlock. I think those two classes, you could say Patron Warrior is up there, but that's really just one archetype. Whereas class-wise, you've got Hunter and Warlock, which bring more than just the one archetype. Mage mm -hmm. um, is popular, but for some reason, it's, you know, Freeze Mage is mostly played. Tempo Mage is not exactly the most popular thing in tournaments at the moment. All right, well... There's no more innervates in Thoid's deck, had to innervate out of Belcher, but he does have a decent hand to handle the aggression. He just needs to get to that oh. turn 7 without too much of a hiccup. Exactly, I'd have to imagine that he's going to play Zombie Chow and hit off this Haunted Creeper just in case of a Houndmaster, which, right as we see it, Strife Crow does have. Yeah, I don't think you can afford risking the Houndmaster here. Without a swipe already in your hand, if you're playing this as Thoida, you can't afford it. Hmm. But that, that's the question right now. He has to think about this. He has to figure out maybe some of the research he's done on Strife Crow is whether or not he plays Houndmaster. He better pin him on that, because otherwise the pain will be real. Mm -hmm. You have to assume he does pin him on that, though. Uh -oh. No! And he the decides assassin. to go face. This is going to punish him like no other right now. Strife Crow is going to throw down the hat master without even thinking. Well, Strife Crow will think about it for about two seconds and a half, and then he'll do it. And then Thoida will be wondering, where is my swipe? Because if he does find it, he will get a board clear. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is not it. And Druid of the Claw is that bad of choice right now. Being able to taunt that up, it will trade evenly with the board currently after running the Zombie Chow into the Haunted Creeper. Yeah, and giving uh, one health back to the Hunter. Really, really big deal here. <laughs> Obviously. Way well, Strife Crow is going to probably drop down that uh, bow. Do you trade with Houndmaster? Bow? Oh, God. Not this again. <laughs> Blizzard, please. Oh, oh, we lost. We lost. I, I'd, I'd expect to see the <laughs> knife juggler animal companion, to be honest, at this point. <laughs> uh, well, actually, that, that was Thoida playing the druid. That wasn't Strife Crow. That was the wrong spectator mode uh, drop. <laughs> this is amazing. I am loving this. This is beautiful. All right, Thoida. There we are. Are we back? I believe we are. I mean, I'm hoping we are. We know the toy does. So the it looks like. Uh. So it looks like he did go with the play with the knife juggler. Um, Animal companion instead. Animal yeah. companion and trade the board off in order to contest it. Did make quite a bit of sense. I didn't dislike that. And the good thing now is he's got enough. Like with the wrath, he's got removal for the at least the juggler. Um, where he can kill Misha with it and set up a really good Ancient of Lore. And funny enough, even though the Hunter has been able to you know, put on some decent aggression and he did get that uh, Houndmaster on the Creeper, Toyota is about to play Ancient of Lore and he's got a heal bot on the back end in case Strife mm -hmm. will push us for damage. So I don't think he's at any risk of getting punished too much very soon. Do you think he goes for the one damage here or the three just wiped off the board? Uh, like, we saw him do 3, and I think 3 makes sense. The only thing is, if you really, really prayed that you got Sap, that was about the only time where that, uh, I mean, Swipe, that is, is the only time where it really was better. 
Oh, that Mad Scientist was the perfect draw to come out with this Shredder. It'll allow uh, Stripe Crow to actually trade with this Ancient of Lore Whoa. and not have to use a bow charge. I see a Loot Hoard in this Loot Hoard. Deck. Okay. All right. Now, now I'm lost. Can we get... I really want to see this deck list. Is so it bad to say that I, I, I hope Stripe Crow wins this just for the fact that I want to see more of this deck? I think that's considered pretty bad. <laughs> so the bow will take this off, leaving Stripe Crow with a massive board that Toyota will not be able to deal with. Um, so if he's a freezing trap, he might consider just punching face and push for lethal next turn. Or are you afraid of Drill the Claw coming out and then taking off the freezing? I think he's more scared of uh, Force of Nature, if anything. Yeah, I think Force of Nature would be the biggest worry, yeah, you're right. It's kind of like an Unleash the Hounds, basically. I like, I wouldn't even be surprised if he played, like, one key legendaries in that deck at this point. If he's playing this, it looks to me like he's playing more of a rampish type of deck. Mm -hmm. I, like, I, I would be very surprised if a healbot made its way into a standard mid-range. It would have to be a ramp deck. So I think the healbot does have to come down here. The question is, how does he proceed afterwards? Do you ever start with Wrath on the Shredder to see where that goes? Narabar Weblord, then you're just kind of run into trouble. But if it's Doomsayer, well, you have also to play the healbot help. anyway. What to do? What... Is okay, so one, on. the one good thing about Healbot right now, to be able to use it to activate the trap... Is that is he's going to have to kill you... it, right? Yeah, exactly, it forces Strike Crow to actually be able to kill this. So I would not mind just using Healbot and Wrathing the 4-3 at this point. Does he ever just let the uh, Ancient of Lore take the hit? That way, if it does get sapped as well, I mean, uh, return to the hand as well, it's not really that big of a problem either. Because it can always heal you for five if necessary. That is true. Oh my oh, goodness! Did Strive there. Crow pick up a sick card on turn eight? Uh oh. And that puddle stomper able to kill a heal bot mm -hmm. and the bow able to kill everything if need be. So if he does want to clear the board here, very easily he can. And Troy is going to be having to top deck Ancient of War perhaps to even stay in this game. And even then, there's the Iron Cal. This is not going to work. These draws really just seem to be going Stripe Crow's way at this point. Whoa. Another antique heal bot. Okay, now I've got to give Thoida the surprise value. The 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 uh, I can't track the blowback, but the surprise stat is really really high right now. Oh yeah, the, being the surprise able to, stat is crazy. Being able to take damage and dish it out at the same time, but you got to realize he's actually not <laughs> doing damage to Stripe Crow, so <laughs> he's doing zero damage. There's absolutely no damage. So, so noxious. <laughs> What is Toyota's blowback for this game currently? I think Toyota's blowback at the moment is upwards of 9.1. 9. .1. 9 point, ooh, you want to give him a 9.12? Yeah. <laughs> so, he's going to obviously take 10 damage here. Well, Spinners really doesn't affect the board state that much. You haven't seen King Crush come out of it, or you wouldn't say that. You know, Strife Crow had lethal like 20 turns ago before anti kill boss starting meddling. Mm-hmm. So here's a question. Does Strife Crow kill off this anti heal bot so it doesn't get the healing value off the uh, freezing trap? I think so, yeah. But what if? I need to find something good. Just what if? Like a Starfall. But it, it, I don't know. For me, it just is so upsetting that you have to use a high main into an anti heal bot. It, it just doesn't, doesn't feel comfortable, you know? But the thing is, like, what beats Strife Crow, right? A big taunt gets silenced right away. So you could play it slow. I mean, what are the cards that Thoida could play that would really punish you? Like Drake into Swipe, if that does occur. But if you had Swipe earlier, he would have probably played it. And now this is going to be game, right? Very soon. If Strifeco can go through this taunt with an Iron Beak, mm -hmm. it's going to be close to game, if not game. So he's got 11 on board, 13 from his hero power. So Strifeco would need to top deck... A kill command would do it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh wow, double Houndmaster. Houndmaster helps, but it doesn't actually seal the game off just yet. Yeah, it's gonna be too I'd expect optical, I think. 
I mean, I'd do it. But you definitely use Iron Beak Owl here, I think. But then how do you go about mm. the follow-up? To play you just around roll face? I might trade my Web Spinner to the Loot Hoarder so that uh, Freezing Trap doesn't get triggered by something meaningless. And you never know what you find, right? You could find something good from that Web Spinner. Mm -hmm. Like, not this. I would actually disagree. I think that's an amazing card now that he knows he's up against more of a Taunt Druid. Does he know that yet? I mean, I haven't I seen the Ancient of War to indicate. I, I guess the Belcher gives it away, though. I think having very... Belchers, the uh, anti hero bots. Right. I think it throw it just sells the ramp very easily. Now, how does Thor to make it out of this? Tree of Life? Nope. That's not it. Lothep won't do it. So he has so to pop that... Belcher and trade. And did you drill the claw Lothep, I guess? But that's still but not you're enough. Still just... Yeah, you're still dead. See, that Cobra actually trades in with the Druid of the Claw. This here. is insane. Yeah, you're right. Actually, the Cobra was not that bad. It's just that I don't think it mattered as much. Like, I was hoping for something like a Tundra Rhino to go face, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to SM Orchid in this position. Well played. Well, Crew wins despite the double heal bot. Druid from Thoida. We're going to see more of this deck, uh, Dart. You will be happy. But you See, I'm happy, but you can tell Toyda's not. That deck seemed like it was... Very much built to beat Hunter. With yeah, double anti heal bot, the taunts, the zombie chows, the druid of the flame. How is that a card in a deck right now? I mean, um, I, I, but I, I'm surprised by it as much as you are. It's it's weak, I guess. To like the tempo plays it makes aren't that good. Besides against Hunter, that's like the only time mm -hmm. where the tempo plays it makes against Zoo. It's mostly useless. Because um, it will typically take away one minion that gets abusive sergeanted, and then you've lost your Druid of the Flame. One upside, I guess, is that it lives through, and God forbid I'm going to make that point, it lives through a power overwhelming egg. But, like, against that anything but Hunter, it's not um, it's not very potent, so. So, again, going into game later. two, Toyota will have the chance to either use that same Druid or switch to his Paladin, but he is going to be up against Strife Crow's own Paladin. What do you think Toyota's best option is here? Um, do, do you think he I should think, use I think his Paladin own? was the better. Oh, I so he Paladin does end up going into Paladin? Yeah. Better with Zombie sure. Chow. Oh, we already see something kind of unique in Toyota's deck. Once again, it's Sun Fury Protector. What could he play in that Paladin deck that would really surprise us? That? Fulton Giant! What? Giant Paladin is back, ladies and gentlemen. Giant Paladin. And you know what's cool about this is that Paladins nowadays, they actually beat each other down to death very quickly. I was surprised by this. Okay, this oh, man. has to be an ant. Mm. Oh, Toyota cannot this has be, to be anti hunter. This, this, this is the anti -hunter most anti-hunter I've ever seen a Paladin be. Yeah, and now he's got to go against the one deck that is the exact opposite of that. Oh, he very slow yeah. control deck. Yeah. He cannot be happy at the moment. He he tried to read this new format Let and target think. a very common deck. Now he's just getting punished for it. Well, if he's playing Heal of Din, though, that's pretty cool because that's a really nice deck. And then again, you know what? It doesn't even lose that often against other Paladin decks. Um, what it does lose hard against, though, is something like... Uh, Patron Warrior, if they get a good burst with Frothing and you can't stop it, you don't have the shielded mini bot. Um, I mean, you don't have the aggression that you typically would have in a mid-range valley to really punish them as fast as you otherwise would. Oh, and we can see Strife Crow's face just as confused as we are when we first saw that card. And now <laughs> he's, he's like, even laughing. Uh, he's like, what am I up against? What am I doing with my life right now? What is a Sun Fury Protector doing that pot in deck? Muster for battle, Sun Fury combo? I, th I think it's a Molten Giant. Uh, I, I mean, Giant's Paladin was a thing, if you remember, right? Long, long ago when uh, yeah, Koyuki... Like, it's been about a year, right? Kind of... Like, Koyuki brought it up, and that was a big fad for a while. And it was popular, too. Mm -hmm. And Koyuki, the uh, Paladin god. Although he does tend to play just about everything now. Mm-hmm. 
A lot so, of people, it is, Hearthstone went away from that, you know, hyper specialization, it seems. A lot of players who were very comfortable with one or two classes because of the way last year was standing could get away with it. But now with Conquest and the forceful multiple class play made it uh, yeah, difficult. Yeah, exactly. To you, that's why we see players like Kit Kats, who was the oh, warrior man. god, being forced to uh, kind of branch out to other different uh, strategies of playing. Yeah, and uh, Strike Cool picking up a really good... Draw engine here. It's going to allow him to trade with the board very, very effectively. And Strifecrow is in a pretty good position, but that mid game could turn around. It's just that the BGH in Strifecrow's hand is going to punish his opponent. Really, Ooh, Cog Hammer is a great pickup here. Um, I can imagine a Cog Hammer coin out Knife Juggler. What do you think? Do you like it the other way around? No, I, I think you want yeah, to use the pool here. That sounded way weirder than I meant it to. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, so knife shoulder coin cog hammer. I mean, I actually like it better, but I, I think would, I would like to keep the knife juggler. I, I, I'd rather have the three three taunted up here and keep behind the knife juggler taunt behind a taunt wall, so that way uh, Stripe Crow has to be able to deal with it when he only has two attack minions on board, so he actually won't be able to clear it off very easily. And I guess, I guess he decides to actually hold on to the coin here. I, I'm very biased, but I usually, in this position, I usually attack with the minion first before using the Divine Shield. That way it's actually taking two more hits from the Paladin, which doesn't have an easy way to do it unless he starts start spawning 1-1s, one which you coincidentally can answer with your weapon and the juggler. But That's guess, actually an interesting point. That that could have been an idea that um, Toyota could have thought about, but... This is definitely a heal it in type anti hunter deck. It's <laughs> I mean, it's so obviously anti hunter. And Thoid is like, why is this happening to me? I play the most anti hunter food I can come up with, and this happens. Now I need to it know if the ice is running Tree of Life. It just goes to show you of how good of a deck hunter is then. If you draw the right cards at the right time, not even an anti hunter druid deck can take it down. Oh, they both run heal bot. So. It does look I think like... With, I, I do think with the prevalence of Hunter and even Patron Warrior right now, that Healbot is kind of a necessary card in a deck like Paladin. Just the amount of leeway it gives you with being able to use your health and your weapons at the same time can really swing the game. Yeah, I agree with you. And the fun thing is, Blizzard, when they made that card, really fixed a huge problem um, with the healing distribution in classes, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of classes were getting pushed out by aggro decks, or a lot of archetypes, and as a result of Healbot, you can suddenly start playing some mid-range decks in a bit of a slower manner, without being forced to resort to those hyper-aggressive tactics by default. So I think the Healbot is one of the better cards out there as far as design goes. Well, I guess he wants to pop that shield. Where, okay, so where does he want the ping? The shield or the 1-1? One -one? Oh, and that's the worst one that could have happened. <laughs> I guess face was worse, but by not, not by much. Oh god. Oh god. Here, uh, here this, power this quartermaster. Good. This can't be good. It's dropping it like it's hot. And Thoida just having to coin out Tyrion Forgering, but mind you, that's not that terrible. He's got the heal bot, he's got the lay on hands, he's got the molten giant if he takes phase damage. All is still fine in Thoida's land. I, I do think that dropping Tyrion right now, it's but, it, but he is going to be worried about an Iron Beak Owl. That would practically take him out of the game right now because he does he is facing up against 13 damage on board I wonder. yeah it is very threatening so, he's gonna be getting molten giant value for almost certain mm -hmm. and then he'll bot behind it which i think is magnificent i'm excited to see this but strife crow does have the big game hunter in hand um there's i i can't imagine strife crow expects to be facing that molten giants i think he's more oh likely my Goodness! <gasps> wow! What is this? Okay, Strike just wants to keep his board alive. You know what? He doesn't go for the uh oh my goodness, that knife. Everything oh, seems goodness. to I need to stop saying oh my goodness, but I can't contain it. This is just crazy. Thoda is <sighs> getting completely countered at every turn. And I wouldn't even but be I, surprised I, if his list ran only one equality as a result of being anti hunter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Oh man, one equality would really make this matchup awful. Reporting for duty. There is not. There's absolutely nothing. 
the Toyota can do here, it feels. Now, if, Stri if Strife Crow didn't have the big game Hunter in hand, it may have made a big difference, but I feel like that's going to be what's going to end the game here. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. Oh, Strife Crow. Oh, oh. Strife Crow drops the big game Hunter. Toyota this has a chance. This is insane. Toyota must what? be happy about this. He's, come on. Oh, and he's showing no emotion. Nothing at all. What's wrong with this? I disagree with that. Did you drop the giant heal bot here? I okay. think so. Yeah. No, first I think you attack into the big game hunter. Yeah. To just to make just to, to make a point and also to drop your health below ten. And then you but play then, giant heal bot hero power, right? So you back up to how much health? If you attack nine. that, you're down to eleven. You heal bot, or you're down to nine. You heal bot up to seventeen. He's showing fourteen on board. You're one off lethal. Strife core is lethal. one off lethal at the moment. But, but he has on hands again. I wonder. My question to you is, if there's a Molten Giant, does Strife Crow even care? I think at that point he just starts going face. If you're one off yeah. lethal, you just go for it. I think at that point. Uh, Wait, why is he not... No, Toy to attack first. first. Okay. Mistake! I do have to... Oh, and he's going to realize it after he attacks. He would or have been not. able to get a little guy off the field. This isn't fair. <laughs> is this what I'm? Is this real? Is this equality real? <laughs> oh. This is so what mean. Is... You know, I might even just steer in and trade into the heal bot, Let and then punch face with everything else. I think that actually makes a lot more sense. Even Tyrion and just going face here wouldn't be a bad choice. Yeah, that's exactly what I think I'd do in the strike post position. It makes too much sense. What is Thoida gonna do? Attack into the 6 6 with his face? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I love how Toyota brought incredibly inner. Ooh, oh, but he has no consecrate here to follow it up with. Um, I gotta say, I love how Toyota's bringing these innovative decks, but Strife Crow's draws are just punishing him for it. And the fun thing is, that's without a big game hunter, right? Let's just remember that that BGH wasn't played as a removal piece here on the the, the giant. So he brings a lot of interesting decks to just about every event event I see, and he's a pretty like he's a really good deck builder. Um, when he's trying to counter something specific, he knows what is good against what. But very often he goes very all in in the text that he takes, and that has punished him in past events as well. And that will do it for Toyota in this series. Strife Crow taking it 2 0. Yeah, he, he constructed a really good deck against Hunter, but somehow the draws from Hunter just completely obliterating his, uh, his Druid. And that sealed the game with the Hunter for Strife Crow in a conquest format, which means as a result, the Paladin just couldn't compete. Exactly. It's a good strategy to go in with targeting a deck, but it's so hard to target a deck that no matter how badly you try to counter it, can still win games. It's an unfortunate uh, thing when it happens like that, but... Yeah. I mean, Freeze Mage, let's say you want to counter Freeze Mage, you play, Hunt, you play Warrior, right? And then you can't lose. So if you're targeting something like a Freeze Mage, it's very easy to never lose. But if you're targeting something like a Hunter deck, a deck that's been uh, basically, I guess, analogous to a Hydra at this point, you nerf a card and it comes up with two new archetypes that have nothing to do with that card. And then they change the decks, people adapt, and they then change again. Uh, it keeps rotating and is always in the metagame. So fighting it is very difficult. Exactly. It creates a really big problem, and right as we saw with that match, Choida was punished for trying to do it. Um, but but well played by both players. I actually did not see any instance other than that one Molten Giant play that either player made any major mistakes. So it, it was well played by both players, both top players in the scene. Uh, but again, congratulations to Stripe Crow for winning that series. Very consistent player is going to move on to the uh, the next his next match. Basically, uh, we're currently in the first week of the playoffs, uh, the pre playoffs. That is, we're going to be having three weeks of that. Then on the fourth week of the event, we're going to have the playoffs, and uh, all the players, you know, scores will be added up, and the top three in each group will be moving on to the playoffs and then uh, compete for the top spot in the tournament. So we'll take a short break. We'll be back with I believe um, Calento versus Kufdon, if I'm not mistaken. And Kufdon, an unknown player to me, uh, 
qualified, went through the qualifiers for Vulcan and actually uh, got in here through merits. And he's going to be fighting off against Kalento, one of the best players in the game at the moment, uh, at least as far as results go. So we'll be right back after the short break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 